Hello everyone, myself Dr. Suresh, Professor of Biochemistry and in this video, I will be teaching you the metabolism of simple amino acid glycine. So glycine being a simple amino acid as well as it is a non-essential amino acid, that means you can synthesize this amino acid. If you are not taking or providing this amino acid in the diet, no issues. There are some chemical reactions through which glycine can be synthesized in our body. So how it is synthesizing? First we will see with the synthesis part, anabolism part of glycine. So how it is forming in our body. So the main contributor in making of glycine here is the other amino acid serine. Serine is a hydroxyl group containing amino acid. So from here both like serine and glycine it is like a reversible reaction from glycine you can make serine and from serine you can make glycine so here the main enzyme is serine hydroxymethyl transferase okay which is a folic acid uh, enzyme dependent okay so this tetrahydrofolic acid takes up the hydroxyl group or carbon from the uh, one carbon pool of uh, substances from the serine and convert into N5, N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate and convert serine into glycine. So the main enzyme is serine hydroxymethyl transferase. Here hydroxymethyl group is donated to tetrahydrofolic acid and converts tetrahydrofolic acid to N5, N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate so that serine can be converted to glycine. So next source will be like threonine. So threonine also can make, so threonine again it is another hydroxyl group containing amino acid from which uh, you can get glycine. Here the enzyme is uh, threonine aldolase and here you will get two parts from threonine. One is glycine, other one is acetaldehyde. So now to talk about, so these are the two reactions where how you are getting glycine in our body. Okay, how it is synthesizing. So once glycine is there, what is the fate of glycine? So now we'll see the metabolic fate of glycine. So now when there is a glycine, glycine undergoes decarboxylation to form amino methyl group by the enzyme glycine decarboxylase, which is a purely PLP dependent enzyme. PLP is nothing but pyridoxal phosphate, which is a B6 water soluble vitamin. Okay, here the involvement of folic acid again, tetrahydrofolic acid will come into the action. It will take up the methyl group to form methylene tetrahydrofolate by the enzyme amino methyl transferase. Okay, at the same time, there is another coenzyme lipomide is there, which can be converted into reduced lipomide by methylene tetrahydrofolate synthase to form free ammonia. Okay, so this reaction will be taking place in liver exclusively because all these enzymes located in liver. So again, this reduced lipomide uh, can be converted to lipomide with the help of NAD+, where it can be reduced to uh, NADH+, H+, by lipomide dehydrogenase. So this overall picture of glycine cleavage system. So as I mentioned in the diagrammatic representation, glycine undergoing the oxidative deamination to form ammonia, carbon dioxide, and one carbon unit methylene tetrahydrofolate. This pathway is a major catabolic route for glycine. The glycine cleavage system is a multi enzyme complex consisting of glycine decarboxylase, amino methyl transferase, and methylene tetrahydrofolate synthase and NADP dependent lipomide dehydrogenase. So, serine again, what to say? Deamination of serine to pyruvate. So, as I said, conversion of glycine to serine and serine to glycine is reversible. So, glycine may convert it to serine and serine. With the help of serine dehydratase, it can be converted to amino acid and by removing amino group, it can be converted to pyruvate. Okay, so glycine is a glucogenic amino acid. So it will be converted into pyruvate via serine formation and it can be entering into gluconeogenesis. Serine hydroxymethyl transferase, as I said, again, same involved from serine to glycine and glycine to serine. So here the main important coenzyme tetrahydrofolate. So now we'll see the important substances or the biological important substances which are coming from glycine. What is the role of glycine in the body? Right. So proteins like serine threonine contributing in making of glycine. So carbon dioxide, uh, ammonia and one carbon pool also involved in making of glycine. So first priority of glycine is to making of proteins, structural uh, proteins such as muscles, skeletal muscles, okay, such as collagen. Abundant amounts of glycine you can get. So again, with the glycine cleavage system, it can be converted to ammonia and then finally urine, uh, urea in urine and one carbon unit of uh, metabolism and it can be converted to serine. After converting into serine, it can be converted to pyruvate and it can enter into gluconeogenic pathway, glucose formation 
it can be converted to cysteine it can form choline okay next is it can be converted to glyoxalic acid to form oxalates in the urine okay creatine formation creatine phosphate and creatinine excretion and it can be acting as a donor of c4 c5 and n7 of purine ring and another important thing ala in making of heme and another uh, anti i mean what to say the uh, uh, tripeptide glutathione and bile salt formation in conjugation reactions uh, detoxification of uh, conjugation reactions making example hippuric acid formation so these are all the biological important functions of glycine so don't think that being a simple amino acid it doesn't have much role but though it is simple it has got many variety of functions in the body so glycine may be used for biosynthesis of as i mentioned in our previous uh, flow chart so creatine creatine phosphate creatinine heme purinucleotides glutathione inhibitor neurotransmitter so glycine can be acting as one of inhibitor neurotransmitter the main thing is gaba but glycine is also sometimes acting as inhibitor neurotransmitter conversion to serine again serine is a non essential so if glycine is there again uh, from glycine you can make serine so conjugation of bile acids yes bile acids are required for making of bile salts and they are required for emulsification of fats detoxification of benzoate so whatever the processing foods we are taking the chemicals what we are adding for preservation so they will be detoxified with the i mean uh, with the help of uh, glycine so especially benzoic acid this is the main preservative in most of the foods okay this benzoate will be detoxified with the help of uh, glycine to form hippuric acid and excreted in the urine so contributor of one carbon pool glycine cleavage system and it is glucogenic involved once gl glycogen cleaved it will involved in gluconeogenesis so if you see one by one now first we'll see uh, the creatine formation how it is involved in making of creatine so here there is involvement of uh, three amino acids glycine arginine and ornithine okay so first glycine combines with arginine to form guanidinoacetic acid so glycine and arginine combine um, sorry here not ornithine only glycine arginine and methionine actually sam is involved in making of creatine okay so glycine arginine combine to form guanidinoacetic acid and rest of the part will be excreted as ornithine by the enzyme glycine arginine amidotransferase okay and here the donor of methyl group is sam okay the methyl group will be added to guanidinoacetic acid to form creatine and now we'll see what is the fate of creatine creatine can be uh, taken i mean like uh, there will be addition of phosphate group from atp to creatine to form creatine phosphate and stored in the muscles as a storage form of energy whenever there is a need of energy this creatine phosphate again donates its phosphate group to adp to form atp okay and it can be converted to creatine uh, creatinine and it can be spontaneously excreted in the urine so there are different types of creatine kinases are there muscles uh, muscular dystrophy you can see and then brain and then heart in myocardial infarction so that is importance of creatine so creatine phosphate in muscles stored as energy so why creatine is important uh, urinary creatine excretion is like what to say it is normal negligible amounts in case of increase um, muscle uh, muscular dystrophy and muscle injuries urinary creatine excretion will be high and normal serum level of creatine is 0.2 to 0.4 mg per deciliter and this level will be increased in muscle dystrophy and the ratio is also different in case of males and females because uh, males will be having more muscle mass so little uh, a, a, a high higher a higher amount of creatine will be uh, you can see in the urine compared with the females so serum creatinine so the serum creatinine level is 0 0.7 to 0 0.14 uh, sorry 1.4 mg per males and 0 0.6 to 1.3 mg for females uh the creatinine levels you can see in renal failure uh, and also in serum levels usually parallelly like severity of the disease better index than blood urea creatinine clearance test and test for glomerular filtration rate so serum creatinine is a benchmark test for what to say renal failure so creatinine production is spontaneous continuous no fluctuations you can see depends on the muscle mass creatinine excretion is constant for a particular person 24 of urinary sample there is urinary concentration of creatine per gram of creatinine next so when you see the flow chart glycine arginine amidotransferase in kidney and guanidinoacetic acid methyl transferase in liver and creatine in muscles and creatine phosphate in muscles and spontaneously this creatine will be converted to creatinine so clinical applications when you see creatinine and creatine so normal serum creatinine level is 0.7 to 1.4 mg per dl and serum creatine level is 0.2 to 0.4 mg per dl creatine level in blood is sensitive indicator of renal function not creatine remember okay creatinine 
as the kidney function is decreased correspondingly blood creatinine level is increased okay and urine uh, contains negligible amounts of creatine in normal males but in early phase of muscular dystrophies the blood creatine and urinary creatinine are increased both creatine and so remember creatinine in blood creatinine in urine in the end stage of muscular dystrophy as the muscle mass is considerably reduced the creatinine level is lowered apart from the muscular dystrophies reduced muscle mass is also cause of for lower creatinine in women in case of old age bedridden state and in low protein diet the enzyme creatine kinase especially the cardiac iso enzyme is elevated in myocardial infarctions so these are the two clinical applications of creatinine and creatine and the concerned enzyme creatine kinase which converts creatine into creatine phosphate okay in myocardial infarctions in muscular dystrophies the spontaneous loss of creatine and of phosphocreatine to creatine requires the creatine to be continuously replaced creatine synthesis makes the major demands on the metabolism of glycine arginine and methionine okay children with our uh, inborn errors of creatine synthesis or transport present with severe neurological symptoms and uh, profound depletion of brain creatine it is evident that creatine plays a critical tough and less appreciated role in brain function and when you come across with the special metabolic functions so glycine is involved in heme creatine uh, purine nucleotides glutathione so conjugative agent conjugated bile acids like glycocolic acid and uh, glycokinodeoxycholic acid these bile acids in turn required for making of bile salts for emulsification purpose of fats so here you see glycine when combined with benzoic acid forms hippuric acid which can be easily excreted in urine as a neurotransmitter in brain stem and spinal cord at moderate levels disturbs the neural traffic at very high levels causes over excitation it constituent of protein since uh, wherever there is a benzoic turns it is a helix breaker glycine is famously known, uh, known as helix breaker because of its simple structure it cannot be uh, like fit into a helix so wherever glycine comes uh, there will be bends and turns you can see in collagen every third amino acid is glycine so synthesis of heme the first step glycine and succinyl coa combine to form ala so the enzyme is ala synthase and in turn it produces heme so now coming to the disorders of uh, glycine metabolism so non ketotic hyperglycinemia uh, defect in glycine cleavage system so high levels of glycine you can see and glycine level increase in blood and urine and uh, cerebral spinal fluid so, uh, severe mental retardation seizures you can see as it is accumulating in the central cerebral spinal fluid no effective management for this uh, primary hyperoxaluria you can say here glycine can be converted to glyoxalic acid finally glyoxalate and oxalic acid so here oxaluria so alanine glyoxalate amino transferase is located in peroxisomes but in patient it is located in mitochondria and hence it is inactive so in mammals part of glyoxalic acid could be directly oxidized to oxalic acid by glyoxalate oxidase so here what is happening the enzyme glyoxalate amino transferase instead of peroxisomes it is located in mitochondria okay so more amounts of glyoxalate uh, will be glyoxalic acid will be produced i mean like uh, it can be excreted so supposed to be glyoxalic acid and then oxalic acid so when you consume more leafy vegetables and vitamin c uh, ascorbic acid there is more production of oxalic acid so it leads to oxaluria so here primary hyperoxaluria due to protein targeting defect glycosyl amino transferase is seen in mitochondria instead of in peroxisomes so degradation of glyoxalate doesn't occur so increased accumulation of glyoxalate and oxalic acid oxalates deposit in kidney leads to renal stones okay nephrolithiosis renal colic and hematuria external oxalosis can occur in heart blood vessels and bone so there are different types of hyperoxaluria so type 2 hyperoxaluria it is a milder condition compared to the type 1 deficient activity of cytoplasmic glyoxalate reductase urolithiosis you can see and management is increase water intake and increase oxalate excretion and minimize diet intake of oxalates restrict intake of leafy vegetables tea cocoa beetroot and spinach consumption has to be reduced so that's all about uh, glycine metabolism and the biologically important pro products coming from the glycine and the disorders related to the glycine metabolism thanks for watching thank you